Hi, I'm Elisa, and welcome to my channel, The Southern Seamstress. In this video, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself, my sewing journey so far, and talk about a couple of t-shirt projects that I've made this year. As I mentioned, my name is Lisa. I'm from the U.S. and live in the southern state of Arkansas. As a young girl, I saw my mom sew all the time, and when I was about eight, I convinced her to let me use her sewing machine. She started me off with making some little tea towels uh, for the kitchen, so simple little rectangles with hems on each side. For my 11th birthday, my mom surprised me by giving me a treadle sewing machine that she had found in the classified ads um, in our local paper. Even though it only did a straight stitch, um, I could use it without being supervised and I had so much fun um, using the scraps my mom gave me to make Barbie doll clothes and little play tops uh, for myself. As I got into junior high and high school, uh, she would let me pick out fabric and patterns uh, to sew. I made all kinds of stuff, uh, dresses, shirts, pants, shorts, and I really enjoyed it. In college, I still sewed quite a bit and had my own little sewing machine. After college, life got a little busier with work and I started sewing less and was mostly making things like curtains, uh, pillows, blankets, not really a lot of apparel. Anytime I would see my mom, she would ask me about my projects and I would tell her about them and then she would tell me about what she was making. But sadly, when I was about 31, my mom passed away and so um, I didn't have anybody to really talk to about sewing. But I got married shortly after that and it just so happened that my mother-in-law was an excellent seamstress. And even though I wasn't sewing much, she would ask me you know what I was making and then she would show me what she was making so uh, that was a nice common interest that we had together. Now that I'm older and my kids are grown I've started thinking about sewing again. Last year I started watching a lot of YouTubers talk about their sewing journeys, about what fabrics and patterns they were making, uh, what they liked about the patterns, what maybe they didn't like, I also watched um, a, a lot of videos about different sewing machines because I thought uh, it was time to upgrade mine because mine was over 20 years old. So last year, I bought a new sewing machine and did several projects for Christmas for my some of my relatives. I made tote bags with embroidery on them and also little baby blankets with some embroidery and pillows but no, no apparel yet. Then after Christmas, I continued to watch um, YouTubers talk about their sewing experiences. And I decided now was the time I was going to start making some apparel. I knew that I wanted to be able to sew uh, t-shirts and knits, and I hadn't done that before. So I started uh, looking at different videos for uh, an overlocker. So I decided on a baby lock overlocker that also is a cover stitch machine because I wanted to be able to finish out the hems and make them look professional. The first garment I decided to try to make was just a basic t-shirt and it's the one that I'm currently wearing. I got this pattern off of Etsy and it's by Tiana D. Patrons. It comes in sizes extra small to two extra large, which is a chest measurement of 32 inches to 48 inches. I made the straight small. I'm about five foot two, so I did decrease it about two inches in the length. And I think I took about an inch out of the neckband. For the fabric, I wanted something that wasn't too expensive uh, since it was my first project. So I found online at Joanne Fabrics this Jersey cotton t-shirt fabric that's called Lilac Folk Jersey. It's really soft and comfortable and it was on sale for about $6 a yard 
and the t-shirt in my size only takes one yard so I've got so it only cost me about six dollars I think the t-shirt came out fairly well I like the sh cap sleeves and the neckline and it's got a slightly relaxed fit that I like even though I took two inches off like I said I'm only 5'2 and it still comes about mid hip length so I can wear it out or tuck in the front I have noticed that after I've washed it a couple of times that the front neckline comes out slightly or it's gotten a little loose and I don't know if I needed need to make the neckband even smaller or that maybe I've stretched the edge of the neck a little bit while I was sewing it. But anyway, I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, you know, I learned how to thread the overlocker. My overlocker does have air threading for the looper, so that makes it quite a bit easier. That was one thing I definitely wanted to get. And I used the cover stitch machine cover stitch part for the uh, hem on the sleeves and the bottom of the t-shirt. For my second t-shirt project, I decided to make McCall 7600 and it's on my dress form right here. I'll bring her a little closer. This envelope contains sizes 8 through 16 which is a finished bust of 35 to 41 and a half. I made the size eight, um, just a straight eight, except that I shortened this middle tier by one inch and then this tier by one inch. So overall it's two inches shorter. I picked uh, my fabric from Sp Spoonflower Fabrics and the designer of all three of the fabrics is Angela Anderson. The top tier is called Ditsy Circles. The middle tier is just called Aqua Fabric and the bottom one is Colorful Paisleys. Anyway, I just like, loved all the colors in this pattern right here. I love jewel tones and bright pinks and aquas and I really love greens. So it had all the colors that I really liked. Uh, this is a, I think this is their cotton spandex blend. So it went uh, together really well. I did top stitch on the tiers here and on the bottom. It has a high-low hem. And on this tier, you stitch the him and then you add it with a little overlap to the middle tier. There was only one thing that kind of bothered me about the t-shirt and that was the neckband. It wasn't one that you stitched both lay fold over and stitch both layers of the neckband down. You only stitch one edge down to the shirt and then you fold it over, press it, and then do a little a top stitch in the ditch here to secure it and it said you could leave it unfinished or you could trim it uh, shorter if you wanted to. Well it just bothered me that there was a raw edge right there and I so I did try trimming it but it still was a raw edge so I took my overlocker you know if you can see and just did a little overlock seam just to kind of make it look finished out. I mean, it's not, it wouldn't ravel without that. No one would notice it. It was just something that kind of bothered me. I want it to look more finished out. But overall, I really like the shirt. It's very comfortable. Uh, this jersey fabric is fairly thick, and I think it might even work out better in a maybe a lighter weight jersey that had a little bit more drape. Sometimes when I'm wearing it, I don't like how this kind of goes out. You know, I'd like it to follow the shape of the body, maybe a little bit more. But overall, I'm very pleased with it. 
So that's my first two t-shirt projects this year. I would love for you to subscribe and hit the like button. Also, I would love to hear where you're from so you can put that in the comments below. I'll be talking about my first woven shirt that I've made this year and also a little bit about the dress form that I use. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful week.